you, Lola, for inviting me to be part of this conversation. I'm very excited about it. Um, Thank you for joining me. Yes. Um, so my first question is just about you, your background, what art meant to you growing up, um, about how, where you're from and who you are informs the work that you do. Yes. Um, so I consider myself a cultural worker alongside of being an artist. Yeah. Um, I used to say I was a visual artist, but now me venturing out to sound, hmm. I'm widening that, that, that label, I guess, in a sense. So as an artist, um, my practice becomes a place where I'm, I'm able to process my intersectional identity, mm -hmm. that identity being black, being African, being queer, being woman, um, all of these things mm -hmm. that kind of come with that. Um, is, you know, I find my practice being able to sit in that and, and process and question and challenge and implicate. All of these things mm. um, happen within the practice. And so the practice becomes a way in which I'm learning myself mm. and I'm learning the world around me. Um, as far as I can remember, I've always been an artist. Mm. Um, whether I was practicing professionally is a different question. Um, which happens, of course, much later in my life. But um, I have always been an artist and hopefully continue, you know, as far as I live, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, is there like a moment where you kind of, I mean, things are never this neat, but is there a moment or a set of moments or an experience where you're like, you know, art is the way I can actually figure all of this out or like art is a way of like knowing myself and knowing the world. Is there a moment where you're like, ah, this is what art can do for me? Or, you know, is it something that just always, it's like breathing that you've kind of always been doing? Absolutely. Um, I didn't realize until maybe around 2014, the way I've interacted with my own practice mm -hmm. um, kind of came to me as an awakening. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, okay, of course, my my practice becomes this, this semantic practice mm -hmm. where I'm thinking about the body, the body a lot, and so kind of questioning why that is, mm -hmm. you know, and and digging deep into myself and why I'm interested in the body or my own body or the bodies that you know have come before me, mm -hmm. and so that awakening definitely put things in perspective mm. for me. Mm. That's super interesting. Um, maybe we could talk about the work that you've been doing prior to the residency. Um, I love when you just talked about that, you know, that talk, talking about yourself as a cultural worker versus as an artist, maybe talking a little bit about the difference between those terms for you. And I think we're going to talk a lot about working in general, because it certainly is informing the work you're doing, but you know, the kind of ways you thought of yourself as an artist and a cultural worker and the kind of work you were exploring prior to the residency and what kind of an opportunity the residency at APL was to continue that work, to further that work, to deepen that work. Yeah, so my, my background is in, in arts administration, right? Okay. Um, that's where my BFA education lies within that realm. Um, and so for as long as I can remember in my professional career, I've been on both ends mm -hmm. of the art world, both the back end and the administration and the programming, but both, you know, simultaneously on, you know, the visual side and, mm -hmm. and creating and making. And so I think the cultural worker side of me, the administrative side tends to inform the, the art practice. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes I don't need to engage in creating or making to, I guess, to express myself mm -hmm. um, and express my need for a community or mm -hmm. my need to, you know, cultivate. And so there's the cultural, you know, practice that I engage in to do those things. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I like to think of myself as a bridge mm -hmm. um, for access, for communities or people who may not know about art or may not, you know, see themselves in that world. Mm -hmm. And so I've become this bridge and I create 
events or I, I create programming or I, you know, I cultivate connections between, you know, the community and the arts. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, that's that on one hand. And on the other hand, um, my practice becomes a way that I situate myself in, in the conversation of, of contemporary art or accessibility or labor or what have you. Um, and so I'm able to both engage in the community and, and both mm -hmm. become like a voice for mm -hmm. the community mm -hmm. in a sense. Yeah, that's super interesting. And that background is really helpful for me, at least in terms of understanding, I think, your interest in multiple multiple media and um, forms, like even in an exhibit, right? You kind of go and you look and there's like so many different ways to bring people together and to bring the art together. And just, you know, it makes so much sense in terms of your work as a cultural worker who's thinking about arts administration, about events, about how to bring people together. And it's just nice to see all of that. Like, I think you make events in the space, right? In the ways that you kind of choreograph how the work is sitting and how people move around it. Um, cool. Um, there was a second part to that question. Oh my gosh, there was. Oh, about yeah. the residency and, and what kind of an opportunity it was for you in terms of the very, uh, the various elements of your practice and, and um, how you were conceiving of this residency as serving those different aspects of your work. Um, this residency for me was a, a chance to kind of dig deeper um, into the whys and why I'm doing this work. Mm -hmm. It was a chance to think more radically about how I'm going about making or creating and what subject matter mm -hmm. I'm choosing to dwell on or choosing to explore. Um, and so with that, I think the APL residency gave me the space and the resources mm -hmm. I need to kind of carry that out. Mm -hmm. um, the resources in which led me to the research that mm -hmm. I've done for the project, um, the space which has led to me conducting studio visits or me creating the work or just me processing and thinking about the work. And so it was absolutely what I needed for mm -hmm. the time being. Um, it was also me coming back into Chicago because mm -hmm. I spent the last seven years in, in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and I've moved down there in 2014. And I like to think of that time as a space where I, um, I was radicalized as mm -hmm. an artist because of the, um, Mike Brown, the death of Mike Brown mm -hmm. um, and the riots and protests that pursued afterwards. Um, and so coming back to Chicago, I wanted to kind of carry that with me and, and, and instill that in a new space and with, with new work. And so it became this home going. And I saw this as an opportunity to kind of be familiar or with the community or what, what's, what's, what would I call it? It's, um, I said home going or homecoming rather, but I was, becoming reacquainted mm. with the space and mm. my hometown and the people that live here, mm -hmm. you know, and the people that have came and gone. And so, yeah, it, it would have done just that. Yeah, no, that's super interesting. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about, um, I love your word, your phrasing there, becoming reacquainted with Chicago as an, as an, as, well, you've always been an artist, but as, you know, as a more radicalized artist, as an artist who's, you know, left the city and then came back with a practice that was different than the one you left with about, you know, what what you kind of found. Well, how did you get reacquainted with Chicago? Like, what did you relearn about Chicago coming back with all the knowledge that you acquired um, in Missouri? Yeah, I, I've learned a, quite a lot, <laughs> you know. Um, I was revisiting certain neighborhoods, um, in, in certain areas that have changed drastically. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much has changed within the infrastructure and, and how Chicago works today, which was very startling and, and very 
very complex. And also, hmm, there were things that, you know, I missed, mm -hmm. of course, um, like the food, mm. like my family, <laughs> you know, um, and, and the beautiful places that Chicago has to offer. Mm -hmm. But they're also things that I realized that I've never questioned mm. when I was living here um, as my younger self. Mm. Um, there are things that I didn't realize or I didn't I didn't notice until coming back with mm -hmm. more open eyes. And so it's interesting kind of processing that in that mm -hmm. space and thinking about gentrification or thinking about the structures in which we have, you know, we drive our cars, mm -hmm. but you know, that the state of policing and um, the state of, oh God, like surveillance mm -hmm. that comes with that. There are a lot more cameras everywhere. Um, and I find that very troubling because they're not cameras to ensue. Well, I'm sure at some level they in ensure the safety of the community, but they're also used to weaponize mm -hmm. the community. And mm -hmm. so I found that very troubling. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that I'm still reckoning with because I am a you know victim of the surveillance and you know and gentrification still. So yeah, there was a lot to to reckon with. Yeah, this, uh, coming home. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really important, and you know, it's it just grabs me thinking about these questions that are about policy and the city, but are also aesthetic in nature, right? Like surveillance, who gets to see what, where, how, why? Like, you know, that that there's like an overlap there with like the power of the state, who's trying to do a certain kind of looking, Absolutely. and the work of the artist, who's also invested in looking, but you know, for different ends and different, different means. Reasons, yeah. Um, and again, it makes me think about the multiple ways looking works in your practice and the different mediums yeah. through which that. Yeah. Um, and hearing and <laughs> or not looking or, yes yeah. or not looking which is really important too yeah. right um or what does it mean to look and not see right yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> like there's a lot of looking but what are you actually seeing right exactly um well maybe this is a good time to transition to talk more specifically about the perfect servant um the work that's surrounding us now about where the idea for that came from um what kind of conversations you were looking to start with this piece, both in terms of um, community and people who were coming to see it, but also like artistic interlocutors um, and precedents that you were wanting to explore and think with. Um, and yeah, how you started to conceive of it and the different kind of um, roads you took to kind of ending up with the idea, the ideas that um, propagate the work. Absolutely. Um, going back to my homecoming, mm -hmm. right? Um, I've been here maybe a little over a year since I left Chicago. Mm -hmm. And so last August, um, I was able to come back home and, and due to, of course, the pandemic, mm -hmm. like a lot of other people had to do, um, relocating or being misplaced during that time came with, you know, a lot of other stress, but mm -hmm. it also came with a sense of nostalgia mm -hmm. for me at least. And so I was staying with family um, and I was staying in the, what they call the wild hundreds, right? Mm -hmm. um, particularly Morgan Park and, and Pullman area mm -hmm. and Roseland in those areas. That's where a lot of my, my family resides today. And so being back in these areas, areas that I've lived in um, when I was a lot younger, mm -hmm. um, in different stages of my life actually, and coming back as, you know, in a, an adult with more open eyes, um, I realized there was a lot that, you know, a lot to this, this, these places or this area that mm -hmm. I haven't explored mm -hmm. um, and I haven't took the time to see or look. Um, and so as I began to do that in that space, um, I came across the Pullman area, of mm -hmm. course. I've always passed it. Um, I've always, you know, wondered why these houses look so pretty mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've never known anyone to you know go to those areas mm -hmm. or who lived in those areas um, and so that was something I, I noticed um, 
and then how the surrounding areas didn't quite look or feel um, like the Pullman area, mm -hmm. more, more particularly the Pullman historic area or sites. And so I began to do research, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what gave me, um, I guess, a theory mm -hmm. for the, the work that I was doing and kind of prompted me to, to, to apply for the residency. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm focusing on, you know, the far south side of Chicago, mm -hmm. which is primarily a familiar space to me, mm -hmm. but very unfamiliar to the rest of Chicago, mm -hmm. which is very interesting. Um, there's a lot of people who don't know about mm -hmm. the south side of Chicago and the people who've came from that, mm -hmm. that area and what they've done for the city. Mm -hmm. And so I knew I wanted to kind of bring that to the table as well. But I also wanted to, I guess, situate myself in this. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I began to take all of the things with me that I had been thinking about prior mm -hmm. to this homecoming. And a lot of that is um, it's kind of radicalized thinking about how we hope to change or how we begin to change, um, you know, uh, certain things that affect us, right? Mm -hmm. These things that economically affect us or socially affect us and becoming more radical in that thinking. And so I've been thinking a lot about the protests and the riots that I've witnessed and became a part of myself while in St. Louis. And so I wanted to bring that with me as well. I knew I wanted to, to touch on that um, as well as, you know, the demographic, the area I was in locale and just other things I'm thinking of as an artist in this mm -hmm. space. I'm um, thinking about my labor, I'm thinking about how exploitive the nature is surrounding labor. Mm -hmm. I'm also thinking about what does pleasure look like mm -hmm. in that sense. Um, how do we begin to think about pleasure and I guess as a disruption yeah. or, or pleasure in the ways we begin to, to reckon our, our, our understanding of who we are in plight of, you know, oh, what's the word? How we go about finding our freedom and, and mm -hmm. how our liberation, mm -hmm. right? making that, that experience pleasurable for mm -hmm. us. Um, and of course, always thinking of my ancestors mm -hmm. and practice itself being like an ancestral like veneration, mm -hmm. you know, a place where I, I become a walking altar mm -hmm. in a sense mm -hmm. for them, you know. Um, and so yeah, all these things, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? All of these things become this very grand project, mm -hmm. right? The perfect servant. Um, I thought a lot about my grandmother who had recently passed um, in the wake of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I thought about her mother, my great grandmother, um, who had, was already deceased, but in a sense that, you know, the maternal structures around me mm -hmm. um, and their relation to labor, I knew I'm always you know, I know that I'm always honoring them. And so I wanted to continue that work. Mm -hmm. And so all of this became kind of pillars within mm -hmm. that, that, that thought. And, you know, the main pillar being destruction or mm -hmm. disruption, mm -hmm. uh, resistance. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I, I began to conceptualize and visualize all of these things. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought performance would be the best outlet for that mm. um, as a way to kind of grab attention of the viewer, mm -hmm. um, as well as, you know, put all of that into physical action mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, through the work of, you know, performance. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. There's so much to dive in <laughs> about that. That was so rich. Thank you, Lola. Um, one question I have for you is, you know, pleasure. I know pleasure has been a part of 
you know, your, your work and, the, and um, uh, a concept you've been interested in exploring yes. um, for a long time. And I wonder if you could talk about the connection between pleasure and destruction. You know, when you think about the things that you were just kind of talking about as touch points, um, labor, resistance, um, servitude, you know, you think about like, I think one's first instinct is to think about struggle, difficulty. Um, all of that is true. But also, wait, where is the space to think about pleasure when you're thinking about resistance and, and um, you know, thinking about um, the history of Black life and art? And so I, I wonder if you could say a little bit more about how you're understanding the relationship between pleasure and destruction. Um, what, um, yeah, I'll just yeah. stop. <laughs> That's the question. I mean, um, <laughs> How do we find pleasure and justice, right? Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be a, a, an experience that doesn't feel good, mm -hmm. you know? Thinking about pleasure outside, outside of hedonism or, mm -hmm. you know, this very indulgent space mm -hmm. where it's very surface level. Um, I'm starting to think of pleasure in terms of anger, mm. um, which, you know, you know, anger is something I've almost felt embarrassed mm. to engage in because mm -hmm. I didn't like how I felt when mm -hmm. I was angry. Mm -hmm. um, and so thinking about anger differently, I'm able to, to think about ways I can express that anger and yeah. it feel good to me mm. and it become a, a pleasurable experience. Mm. Um, and so destruction, you yeah. know, was something that came to mind, you know, I've been also taking up the practice of screaming, you know? <laughs> Me and my friends go to the lakefront um, and we scream, mm. right? And we scream into the void mm -hmm. of the lake. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one faucet of how we can express our anger or mm -hmm. our strife in a very pleasurable way. Mm. Um, and so destruction has become a way that I'm also expressing my anger. Mm. Um, I think the pleasurable aspect comes from this detachment of the object. Mm -hmm. I am, you know, destroying in a sense. Um, I think as a sculptor, mm -hmm. as, a, as a black woman sculptor, mm -hmm. particularly, um, it's a very challenging practice. Mm -hmm. um, as an artist, there's the making of the object. There's probably the, the you know, the process in what you're thinking and, and processing and then there's making. Um, but there's also like what happens after the object has been made, mm -hmm. right? Um, having to care for that object, having to store it, mm -hmm. having to hope it sells mm -hmm. so that you don't have to care or store it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because, you know, it's becoming an expense to you mm -hmm. if you don't have the space. Mm -hmm. Um, and I hadn't always had, you know, a studio space. Um, um, so, you know, that pleasure of destroying my own objects mm -hmm. um, is, is lies, you know, in that space. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to look after this item. <laughs> I don't have to ship it anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have to pack it and put it in storage. I don't have to pay the storage fees mm -hmm. for it. Um, I don't have to hope it sells, mm -hmm. you know. I don't have to worry about all of these things. And so destroying of these objects becomes therapeutic mm -hmm. in a sense, mm -hmm. a release, you know. Yeah. I become unburdened by this object. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so me finding pleasure in that, it's aiding my um, understanding of how I can express my own anger. Yeah, that's so interesting. Um, I wonder if you could talk about tying that kind of contemporary sense of your your own um, your own labor as a cultural worker, and I think you know again, I think we hear all of your hats in that answer, the arts administrator hat, the artist, you know, um, uh, and how you tied your know, your own sense of liberation of destroying art to um, your rendering of the perfect servant, this historical rendering of of 
um, domestic labor and that and that act of destruction by a different kind of worker in a different kind of period, but clearly has resonances across these across time and across genre. Yeah, I guess I'm thinking about an intergenerational pleasure. Mm -hmm. And so I know that my ancestors didn't have time to relish mm -hmm. in, in resistance or anger or mm -hmm. pleasure or disruption. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to do that for them, you yeah. know, using myself. Because mm. um, at times I felt I didn't have the time to be angry or the time to destroy things mm. or, or resist things. And so it becomes a way I'm going back in time to mm. allow them space for that pleasurable moment, mm. while at the same time being present in the moment and allowing that for myself. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the connection between, you know, my ancestors and me and the labor that we, we do in this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really powerful because, you know, I think um, it's, you know, um, it's complicated with Black life and Black art and Black history, right? There's so much so such a desire to go back to the archive and recover what's been lost or what has never been saved and um, to kind of find particularly black women in the archive who haven't been captured in that way. And your work is, I think, in some ways asking us to question, not question that desire, but to think about other ways we could think about presence and think about recovery that aren't about only going to an archive and recovering something that has been lost, but um, how do you think about recovery through destruction, which I think is such an interesting, um, different take on that question. Thank you. It's, it's kind of going back in time, in a sense, um, and allowing for that to happen. You know, I chose the platter um, as an object for a reason. It's, mm -hmm. a, you know, serving where it's meant to serve other people. Mm -hmm. And so I think essentially destroying that in the performance mm -hmm. um, becomes a, a symbol for that liberation, mm -hmm. in a sense. Yeah. Um, maybe we can talk about the performance, about all the different mediums that are represented in this project, right? You have the kind of on-site performance of the shattering. You have the pieces in the exhibit of, of, of the platter that was shattered. You have the lenticular print you have the video and the audio that's also that. So, I, I mean, and then, you know, we also have the rocking chair and your costume in, this, in the space. So I wonder if you could talk about your interest in mediums and the different ways, wh why different media, what that allows you to do and the different um, ways you thought about how each medium in the space is, is speaking to the larger whole of the work. Um, I'm interested in interdisciplinary approaches in art, mm -hmm. mainly because of my own mind mm -hmm. <laughs> and how everywhere, you know, I'm everywhere at all times and thinking about different things and mm -hmm. different mediums. Mm -hmm. And so um, it becomes this, this, this place where I can, I have these things at my disposal mm -hmm. because that's just how my brain works. Mm -hmm. I can't focus on one medium too long because then I'd get bored. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then there's also this space where, you know, I'm also talking about black life, particularly, mm -hmm. you know, my experience in that, um, which is very multidimensional, multifaceted. Mm -hmm. And so just choosing one medium for that would, you know, doesn't really work sit well with me, you know? So it's just like, okay, I need, I need a lenticular print for this, or I need, you know, I need a, a photo for that, or I need to do this in ceramics. Mm -hmm. um, it just all makes sense in mm -hmm. my head. Um, and so thinking about disruption, I'm also thinking about the gaze, disrupting the gaze mm -hmm. and, and disrupting notions of exploitation and labor, um, whether it's how we treat domestic workers, mm -hmm. um, in history mm -hmm. and now, or, you know, how we go about thinking about, you know, what we are entitled to mm -hmm. and how entitlement kind of messes with our gaze or, or our perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and so why you would see a broken platter here is is also implicating that entitlement to mm -hmm. have an object ready for you 
on a pedestal to be able to view at your own disposal. Mm -hmm. um, it's just another aspect of disrupting that. Mm -hmm. You're so used to seeing finished works in the gallery yeah. um, that you don't necessarily think of an object being broken in the mm -hmm. space and then being put on display. Mm -hmm. um, as well as, you know, the lenticular print, you know, it's in a moving image mm -hmm. in one. And so there's three different images mm -hmm. in which you can't fix your eyes on just one image because mm -hmm. they, they merge into each other or mm -hmm. they, you know, they blend into each other. And so it's the, that refusal that comes up again and again as a, a current continuous theme within mm -hmm. my practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this also seems to come back to um, what we were talking about earlier about surveillance, right? Like, you know, there's something about the lenticular print. If you look, you can't, you can't see everything, right? You can only see what you can see from one angle, right? And you have to move to see something. Else. I mean, it's so interesting how movement is a part of, I think every piece it's gestured to, or it's literally a part of the piece, right? Um, like down to the rocking, <laughs> the rocking chair, right? Um, and I wonder if you could talk about that sense of movement and um, how that relates to your larger practice and why you're drawn to like um, work that, you know, um, uh, conjures like dynamism and kineticism, um, even when they're, you know, technically still, there's so much movement still conjured in your in all the pieces here. Yeah, I, it's not something I often think about, honestly, but I see it within all of the work that I do. Mm -hmm. There's always, you know, a movement. And I, and I guess I'm speaking to something that's within me mm. or maybe within all black life, mm. um, the constant moving, constant integrating that we endure mm -hmm. in this life, you know? Um, which can be very satisfying, mm -hmm. um, but also can be very tiring. Mm. And so, yeah, I think it's just something that I inherently like, that just inherently comes out in the work mm -hmm. and it's something I don't often think about. Um, but yeah, we're always moving. It's the wave, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, there may be disruption in that wave. But yeah. 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 Um, well, maybe I'll ask this question as maybe a, a last question, which is about um, the future of this work. Is this is this done? Is Perfect Servant done? Is it a series that you can imagine doing different iterations of? And just general, in general, what's next for you? Hmm. I don't think of it as a series, mm -hmm. um, but I don't think of it as being completed. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a body of work that could possibly be added on to. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot about locality mm -hmm. and where I see this work. And so I'm thinking about maybe, or how does this work do going back to these areas? Mm -hmm. um, how would the work be conceived in a Pullman arts mm -hmm. gallery, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so I'm thinking more so in that sense, mm -hmm. um, but no, I don't think it's completed. I don't think anything is, is completed. Mm -hmm. I think anything could be changed, altered, or perfected, destroyed. or destroyed, <laughs> right? And so, yeah, I don't think of it as a series, though. I do see the work growing mm -hmm. and expanding in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then what's next for you after this residency? Um, you know, what, what, what are you going to do? What do you dream of doing? You know, where, where are you going next? So many dreams and aspirations, <laughs> but um, I, I just hope to kind of continue that work. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always looking for opportunities mm -hmm. to, to learn, yeah. to give back to my community, to collaborate, um, to understand. There's um, things I would like to do in regards to, um, of course, my, my cultural worker mm -hmm. um, practice. And so I'm, I'm interested in community of artists and mm -hmm. kind of becoming that bridge once mm -hmm. again um, for community and for arts. And so I'm hoping to kind of create programming around that, um, centered around disruption of, you know, our daily, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, 
how we go about life and how we navigate and kind of honing in on pleasure and desire and care and what that really means. Mm -hmm. um, past, you know, uh, hedonism or, or surface level acts of indulgence. And I'm also thinking about how I can bring that to my art practice. Mm -hmm. And so I do have a couple exhibitions lined up for next year that I'll be doing some group shows, maybe a, a solo show here or there. Um, so I'll be in the studio. You can find me in the studio, um, but you can also find me in the community. Wonderful. So yeah, look for me there. Will do. <laughs> Thanks a lot. This has been so fun and so enjoyable. And, um, you know, I'm so grateful for your work and your time. Yes, well, thank you.